Man, I tell you, um, do a lot of, we shoot a lot of Going Ike episodes and uh, we make it a point to try to fish for different species, different conditions. Um, and this one that I'm thinking about doing is really special. Give you the background on this. Um, I have a good friend, Rich Ortiz. Uh, Rich is an amazing musician, a singer, songwriter, lives in upstate New York on a place called Lake George. And I've known Rich for a long time. He's, uh, he's been gracious enough to help with our Ike Foundation. He's uh, real instrumental in getting new kids fishing. And he's just a good dude. And for years, we've been discussing getting me up there to fish Lake George. Not in the spring or summer or fall, not when we're bass fishing or open water fishing, but to come up the coldest part of the year in February and ice fish on Lake George. You know, it made me excited because um, ice fishing is something that I try to do at least once a year, if not more. So, you know, last two years, it sort of didn't pan out. His schedule got bad with, with performing. My schedule got bad with tournament fishing. This year, finally, we found a day or two in February that was open for both of us, and we put it in the calendar. You know, I'm excited about this because I told Rich, and I'm, I'm honest with him about this, setting it up, and I said, the biggest fish that I've caught through the ice was a sturgeon. But outside of that one fish, most of the fish I catch through the ice are two or three pounds or smaller. I've caught two or three pound walleye, I've caught some, some yellow perch, I've caught some trout, everything's little. And you know, Rich is really, talking to me about this trip, that there is potential to catch five, six, eight, 10 plus pound fish through the ice. That's got me excited. The other thing is two of the species that we're gonna try to catch are new species for me through the ice. One is a lake trout and the other one is northern pike. Yes, I've caught both species in open water before, but the prospect of catching them through the ice really, really has me intrigued. You know, the last bit of detail, and this is the icing on the cake for me, where I have to do this show, is that we're gonna do some traditional fishing through the ice with an ice rod, some, some just hole hopping, but he's got something special planned, which is catching fish on a pop-up or a flag, a tip up. Um, and that's exciting for me because I've only done it once or twice. I think I've only caught maybe one or two small fish doing this technique. And I'm really interested in it because this is a new way to fish. The thought of catching a monster fish through the ice with your hands, that's awesome. So I'm jacked up to get up there. You know, I decide to go up the night before because the bad thing about February in upstate New York is the weather is really iffy. And I mean, you can't hardly predict it. It's hour to hour sometime. So I decide to go up the night before and it's not a long drive from my house. It's about a five or six hour drive down here in New Jersey, all the way up to Lake George. And uh, I, I wanna get that drive out of the way. Man, I get up there and I'll be honest, I can't even sleep. I'm so excited, I got so much energy going on. Uh, but before I know it, I'm sleeping, my alarm goes off, and it's 5 a.m. Dude, I am so jacked up to get out there and fish with Rich. Man, I load the truck up, put my rods in, put everything in, and it's about a 20 or 30 minute drive to the lake. I get there, we get into the place that I'm meeting him, I get to my pen, I see Rich, and man, I'm pumped up. 
He's ready to go. It's so critical for him to get out there before that sun rises. And it's not as easy as just going fishing. There's a lot of work to do. We've got to drill the holes. We've got to put, put up a little pop-up tent uh, and a heater. And we've got to drill the holes. We've got to set up the flags. We've got to clean the, the ice off the holes. We've got, there's all this stuff. And I'm so pumped up. I'm like, let's go. Let's load it up. And as I start putting my rods and my Lowrance unit in the sled, I'm looking around and I realize I forgot my bottoms. I forgot my ice bibs, my AFCO ice bottoms. I left them at the hotel. So sure enough, I've got to go all the way back. Luckily, Rich went out there while I'm driving back to get them and started doing a lot of the prep work. Got the tent put up. He started getting things set up, got the heater ready. By the time I get back, the sun's starting to creep and we like peel out there on the four wheeler. Um, you know, I can sense the tension because I know how important it is for Rich to get these holes drilled, to get the flags set up, and to get that early bite before that sun rises. So I can see he's stressed out and I'm trying to help him. I'm drilling a few holes, I'm trying to help him set up these flags. And it's an interesting process. So I'm learning a lot as I'm watching him. Before we know it, the good news is we've got 11 flags, 11 pop-ups set up. The bad news is that sun is pretty high in the sky and we're looking around and not a single flag is going up. I can see it in Rich's eye. He doesn't even tell me this and I can see it in his eye that there's a good possibility we've missed this morning window. And I feel bad because it honestly, it's my fault, right? It's my fault. I'm the ones, I'm the one that forgot my bibs. I'm the one that put us 30, 40 minutes back. So I feel bad and I'm, I'm starting to feel sorry just for myself. And as I'm feeling sorry for myself, this is actually how it happened. I'm looking out there at that field, that sea of 11 flags. And as I'm looking out there, I watch one go, Toing! And I'm like, Rich, a flag went up. All right, look at this. We've got our first flag pop. We're not even done setting up yet. Uh, Rich, we, I, I was scanning. We were setting another one. I was scanning. I actually saw it pop up like a boner popping up right there. Let's do this. And sure enough, I mean, we hadn't been set up 10 minutes. We run over there. We see this flag. And now is the time when I have to learn how to do this. So I'm watching, Rich. I'm watching him on this first one where you have to pull up the flag and you have to not create any tension. You got to sort of leave it slack and watch the reel to see if it's still or if it's moving. And he pulls this thing up. He's very careful with it. And I'm watching that spool just go. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm inquisitive. I mean, what do I do? Do I set the hook? Do I apply steady pressure? Do I? And, and Rich kind of guides me through it. I don't need a big hook set, sort of a little tug and steady pressure. And I do that and sure enough, there's something on that other line. You know, the best analogy I can give you, if you've never ice fished before, is catching him on a hand line is exactly like catching him on a rod and reel. And when they get, when they, give you the opportunity to take, you take. And when they fight and dive and they pull away, you give. Just like with a rod and reel, it's a, it's a give and take, right? You take when you can, you give when you have to. And dude, my heart's pounding. You know, I ripped my gloves off. And right now, at this point of the day, we're talking about negative temperatures. It was eight degrees when I looked. With wind chill and cold, wet hands, it's gotta be in the negatives. But I forget about all that because my adrenaline is pumping. And soon as, as soon as I sort of see something flash, Rich gets in there and he helps me figure this out. And I, what is it, what is it? Is it, a, is it a pike, is it a trout? And out of the hole comes the first lake trout of the day. <laughs> Yeah, 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 look at that thing, dude. 
the great thing about it is it's not a little one. It's not a giant one, but it's a great solid lake trout. And it's my first one through the ice. Oh my God, dude. I have never, never experienced anything like that before, guys. Man, I've, I've caught a lot of cool fish in my life, but this trout coming through the ice first thing in the morning, getting the monkey off the back was so important. We look at this fish, we take a couple pictures, and the great thing about this style of fishing is it's all catch and release. So we get the hook out of its mouth, we put that trout back in the hole, we put its head in, and watch that thing kick away. All right, first fish of the day, beautiful lake trout. We're gonna let this thing go. Yes. Yeah, number one, bike on ice, yeah. Dude, I am so excited. I'm high-fiving, I'm still hoarse from yelling, but then the reality of how cold it is hits me and I look at my hands and they're almost all shriveled up. So I dry my hands off, put my AFCO gloves back on, and I'm thinking, how can it get any better than catching one? I mean, within minutes of putting the flag, how can it get any better? This is unbelievable. And my mind is thinking about getting back to that pop-up tent, turning the heater on and getting my hands up, getting my hands warm. But before I know it, Rich says, another flag up. And I'm like, I think he's kidding with me because it's a minute after we let that fish go. Another flag pop. How long is that? <laughs> he goes, I want to see that. I want to see that pop again. I heard Same thing. Go. Adrenaline kicks back in. I forget I'm cold. And me and Rich just start the book over to this flag. And it's one of the flags that we set up on the outskirts of this area that we're fishing. And that's usually a good sign because the flags that are on the edges, either super shallow or super deep, they're the ones that have a tendency to catch the big fish. So we run out to that flag. Now I know how to, how to do it. The gig is up. I take the flag out of the hole. This time that reel, instead of peeling off, the reel's just creeping. It's just gone slow. And I look at Rush, I say, what, is, this, is this okay? What does that mean? He looks at me and he says, it's a good chance it's a big pike. All right, so we've got another flag up uh, here. Oh, that's a lake trout. Is that a lake trout? I, I don't know. It was acting like a pike. Oh God, he's taking line, he's taking line, he's taking line. Okay. And once I grab that line and start pulling it, I know this is a different animal. I just caught a lake trout that was seven or eight pounds. That was a good trout. But as I'm fighting this thing, there's points at where I cannot even gain any on this fish. And then all of a sudden he starts sort of giving me a little, and I think, here he goes, I got him now. And he takes it back. But this goes on for a long time. It felt like an hour. It was probably about five or six minutes. But finally, I get to the leader. And the neat thing about this style of fishing with these flags is it's a combination of a sort of a braid main line to a barrel swivel to a fluorocarbon leader. And that fluorocarbon leader is about three or four feet long. So when you get to that leader, you know it's close. And just like fighting them with a rod and reel, it's the most exciting and nerve wracking part of this fight. So when I get to that fluorocarbon leader, now I gotta be careful because it's lighter fluorocarbon. It's like 17 pound tests. And that ice, that hole we drilled has sharp edges. And one of the things I'm trying to do along with letting them go is keeping that fish, the fight in the middle of the hole. I never want that line to rub up on the sides because that 17 pound flora, dude, it'll cut like it's two pound test. So I'm fighting and I'm fighting and I'm fighting it. I have no idea how I'm even gonna get this fish out of the hole. But the moment we see the back of this fish, we know what we're dealing with. And the first thing we see is a back 
that's about that wide. I mean, a legitimate 12, 14 inch back across. And we know now that this is a big northern pike. This is exciting. The, the chance to, to, to get two new species through the ice done within five minutes of each other, this is crazy. So this is the critical moment. And with Rich's help, we're able to tire this thing down, get his head, that beaky head, come up through the hole. And as Rich grabs it and starts pulling it out, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. How big is that thing? How big is that thing? How big is that thing? It is the longest northern I've ever seen, and it's out of the hole. Dude, what a moment. What a moment for me. Um, because when, when you land this fish, when it's safely out of that ice hole, it's like you catching the fish. It's like you netting the fish. It's like you lipping the fish when you're in open water. And that's the moment where the puzzle's solved and a sigh of relief. And man, I, I, I don't even remember a lot, except I know I was yelling and screaming. <laughs> I'm holding this thing up, the reality that we've got a northern that's well over 10 pounds, and we caught him through the ice on a hand line on a technique I didn't know about. And I look at my watch and we're a good 20 minutes into the day. Well, I'm like, can't get any better. We've got both things I wanted to do, but it really did set the tone for the day. The interesting thing is that Rich called it. He said that early bite is key. So after those two fish, we go back to the pop-up, we turn on the heater, we start warming up our hands. For the next two or three hours, you know how many flags went up? Zero. And he was perfectly dead on on how critical that early morning bite was. Thank God Rich got the flags out really quick. Thank God we have 11 out and we were able to get those two bites. And it really did calm us down for the rest of the day. You know, now that we're in this, this little pop-up, uh, it's a different world in there. You know, once you get in the pop-up and you close the zipper, you know, now you're in this little shelter and we have a little Mr. Buddy heater on. I've got these amazing Rocky boots on. I've got my AFCO suit. And within five or 10 minutes, I'm, I'm hot. I went from being ice cold, frostbite, hands curled up, to being borderline hot. But we're not just killing time in here. One of the other things we're doing in our little pop-up is we're getting to do some perch fishing. And this is something I've done before. And to me, it's a super exciting, fun way to catch fish through the ice, even if they're not big. And you know, a good perch is gonna be 12 or 14 inches, maybe a pound, pound and a half. And a lot of them are gonna be small, but it's almost like a game, playing a game while we're waiting for our flags to go back up. So I'm using this amazing La Ranch unit. I've got this great new Elite 7FS. There you go. Oh, oh it's better, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Something good happening here. Nice. What is this? What do I got? Something happening here. Oh, hey! Oh yeah. Hey, hey, oh, yeah, 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 it's a good one. No, yeah. not really, but. Look, that's, that right there. Let me scroll back in my history and I'll show you the whole thing. You ready? There's my, there's my jig going down. Get near the bottom. This little mass is the fish. Right there, the fish eats my jig. And right there, that's me reeling the fish up. And there's the perch. How cool is that? Pretty awesome. I've got this amazing new technology and I'm watching these little tiny jigs. And we're fishing, if you look at that jig, it's so little, so tiny. 
This thing probably is a 32nd of an ounce. This little tiny jig with a little Berkeley bait on the back. And we're dropping these things 30 feet into weedy bottom. And as that thing drops, I can see everything on that little ranch unit. And I'm watching, like a video game, I'm watching these fish come up, meet the bait, and you sort of have to tease them and get them to eat it. Okay, we're out on the ice with active target. And look at this. Look, there's my lure. If you can see that white dot right there, that's my lure going down. Now look at the bottom. As this lure falls, you can even see my line because my line has some ice on it. So it's got a fresh, but look, 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 look. Look at the fish rising up. Oh, yeah, yeah, look, 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 look. Look at that fish right there, look at him. Oh my God, look, 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 look. There he goes, through the ice. Watch him eat it, watch him take it. I was able to slow it down right when I saw that fish coming to get it. Look at this, look at there. There you go. There's the result, perch. Some nice eating size perch, some small non keepers. Dude, if you're not using this new active target technology, if you're bass fishing, if you're crappie fishing, if you're saltwater fishing, and if you're ice fishing, you're missing the boat. As soon as we start dropping, we start catching perch. The problem is, every time Rich sets the hook, I see his rod doubled over, it's really bent, he's fighting this good perch, he lands it, it's a good one, 10 to 12 incher in the bucket. I watch one eat it, I set the hook, my rod's not as bent. I fight the fish, it's two inches, it's three inches, it's two and a half inches, it's four inches, it's one and a half. I can't catch a big one! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every time I set the hook, I'm waiting for a big one and I can't do it. But you know what? I'm having fun and this style of fishing, the electronics, makes it a challenge. You know, why we're in here, you know, we've had a lot of work uh, between cutting the holes, fighting those early fish, catching perch. We get hungry. And Rich has a surprise for me during the course of the day. And it is what he calls an ice lunch. Well, when he first t told me about an ice lunch, I figured he's got some cold deli sandwiches on ice, right? It's an ice lunch. Well, he starts breaking out a stove with propane heat source. And before I know it, he has homemade venison chili and Oscar Mayer wieners on that grill. And we're gonna do a lunch out on the ice. That's homemade. Homemade chili. I even shot the deer for Venice it. Venison chili. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude, look at that. It looks good. Yeah. Going in there, looks good. Yes. I'll use that as a cover for the heat. Weeders! Weeders! We're we making a nice lunch for you, huh? <laughs> Oh, we've got weeders, <laughs> chili and weeders. Oh, this weeder. Oh, yeah. Man, I don't know how this day it can get any better. We're catching fish, we're catching them a new way, and now I'm eating amazing food from Rich. But just when I think that, it gets a little better. And he's got a Bluetooth speaker, and he puts on some of his music. And it was a cool part of the day for me because, you know, you realize how much of an expert he is at this fishing, but you realize what a cool dude he is. Uh oh, no, I'm not kidding, dude. It's a different animal. Oh yeah. Oh. That's it's not a good one. The song's working, bro. It's working. The song is working. So working. Let him listen to it for a little bit. There is only one cause for the world to meet the land. Both guys and sun, and it's coming up again. 
We are one people. Together we shall be.